go ahead, take a deep breath, pull it in, hold, and let it out. You're here today to develop and strengthen your mindset because you know that weekly training sessions and mindfulness is the missing link the world is searching for when it comes to business success. So set aside the external logistical side of business growth and come with me now to a world of focus, purpose, calm, confidence, and personal power using NLP and CBT tools and techniques. I am your host, Leah Marie, and you're listening to Flip the Switch. Hey there, you guys. So excited to be back again on Flip the Switch. And I'm so excited, you guys, about today's guest. We have Amanda Asioli on the podcast with us today, who is a business strategist, um, a strategy coach. And so I'm excited to be able to pick her brain about timing and how to mindfully shift inside of switching from corporate to entrepreneurship and just everything that kind of happens inside of that. And even if you haven't made that shift recently, or you're thinking about making the shift, or you've already made the shift, you're going to find tools inside of this podcast I know that are going to be helpful for you. So welcome to the show, Amanda. Thank you so much, Leah. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, Excited to chat with you as well. Awesome. Awesome. So um, just so you guys know, Amanda is a uh, recovering corporate woman who has found her passion in empowering other women to grow and scale successful businesses. She's married and has two children and lives in Tampa, Florida, where it's nice and warm, which is why I'm in like a sweater and a scarf in Canada in the Rocky Mountains. It's like spring-ish weather today and she's in a tank. So (laughs) yes, with the fan on above me and probably the air conditioning still running. So yes, it's actually a cool day for Florida. It's probably like 75. So that's great for spring weather for us. Yeah, we we had some really, really nice heat and warm weather last week. And then all of a sudden it went back to spring. We were like, oh, summer's here. And now we're back to spring. So nope, not yet. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, let's just jump right into this. I'm so excited. So um, let's talk about to start us off with why don't you tell us your story? Um, and then we can get into kind of like the before the during and the after of what it takes to be able to transition and the timing around all of that stuff. So why don't you go ahead and start off with kind of your story? Perfect. Yes. So I was a little background on my personal life, Um, married, but met my husband in Brazil and I'm originally from Nebraska. So we were living together as a family in Nebraska and, you know, with him being from Brazil and I had traveled around a bit, the winters in Nebraska just were not suiting us. So we had moved to Tampa, Florida about two years ago and uh, it, that was part of the initial journey of me knowing that I didn't want to continue staying inside the corporate space. So with that transition, uh, moving to a bigger city, a more populated city, there was more traffic. I was spending way more time on just the daily grind of dropping kids off at school and day, daycare, taking the long commute to get to work, spending my entire day sitting in an office, which was fine. And I did love my job. It was a great job. But Uh, At the end of the day, I was feeling so stuck and unfulfilled and just this this inside fire of I'm giving so much of my soul to someone else's dream, right, was really like the golden nugget for me that knew it was time to change. Then not only to add on the stress of the mom guilt and feeling like I wasn't seeing my family enough, all of that really was the beginning of me wanting to find a way out of my current situation, which was, you know, a nine to five job in corporate finance. So that was when I really, that that was what was going on internally of, okay, I have this, this great big job. I have a nice role. I have a nice title and make a good amount of money, but I still feel unfulfilled and the passion and the drive is, is not going to sustain me much longer. So now what, uh, you know, that's really where that drive to find something else started for me. Wow. Awesome. So, um, basically it sounds like, so you've transitioned out and you're home now and you're working with helping other people, um, to be able to make that transition as well and to be the strategist behind that. So that's awesome. That's super exciting. So what would you say, um, is some of the tact, like, I guess the strategies that you would take through this three-step journey, if we were to break it into three steps of before, 
meaning kind of like what um, what does it take to transition um, into out of corporate and into like the real like dream of what you want to yeah. create um, and and then kind of like what how do you set yourself up for the timing for that like mentally and financially like what sure. does it take to set yourself up for that and then after like you arrive it's kind of like hey well what do I do now like what what happens there so why don't we go through each of those categories so let's first look at um, what's the first steps um, do you think or that did you need to take um, mindfully in order to have the courage to kind of make that shift and make that leap of faith to leave behind working for somebody else's dreams and start working for your own? Yes, a lot of it was a really big mind, mindset shift for me. It took a lot, probably longer than I wanted it to take, but I didn't know that while I was in the middle of it and in the thick of it. So to start out, probably even a year before I started as a freelancer, even then I didn't know how it was possible, which is probably where a lot of listeners will be, right? How is it possible to actually, you know, me in corporate finance, how can I, uh, you know, get out of this role and do something different? So um, that started in honestly some Google research, figuring out like where am I going to figure out how to transfer my skills into something different? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sorry, one second. Can you please leave? <laughs> okay, thank you. How, how old is that little guy? Sorry about that. Uh, that's my daughter. She's oh, your six. Daughter. Uh, oh, I just yes. saw I just saw brown hair. I didn't even see her face though. No, yeah. She was not to enter mom's office. So anyway, apologies. But so in that uh hunt for what am I going to do? How am I going to transition my skills? It took me probably a year to understand how I can turn a successful corporate job into something else. And for me, that looked like freelancing at the time where I could uh, function working with another small business out there. I could transfer a lot of my skills from the corporate space, which looked like organizing. Uh, and this was the initial skills I was transferring to helping a business organize. How is that virtual business running their back end. What I was finding is that a lot of entrepreneurs started a business, but then didn't actually know how to run a business. Mm -hmm. So as a freelancer, I was coming in to help them set up more of their back end, making sure that they knew how to follow through with leads, making sure they knew how to have a sales system in place. Uh, for me, what seemed like some more basic foundations, they were completely missing the point, which would then allow them to, um, not be able to scale as much as they wanted to or to move forward. So right, that, yeah. that timing really, I mean, again, it was probably a year that I was kind of a fly on the wall for a lot of different uh, Facebook groups and research groups and how are people doing this and just kind of figuring it out. Um, then once I finally launched as a freelancer, it wasn't until another about eight or nine months that I actually left. You know, so we'll get into that in a second when we talk about that middle part of the transition. but. Early on, it was honestly just starting is the one thing I always like to recommend to people. You have to just start with something because, you know, I have no regrets, but if I wouldn't have been a fly on the wall for a year, you know, again, my story could have been that much shorter where I just jumped in and started and tried. And uh, the mindset shift that occurred in that first step was not caring what other people thought. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I started as a freelancer before I really even told anyone about it. I probably didn't even tell a lot of people that I was freelancing until I had, you know, one or two clients. Yeah. And then it was still kind of this external judgment of, oh, okay, that sounds fun. Kind of like, oh, you're selling makeup now. Like that was still the feeling that I got was it's not actually going to amount to anything else, right? You're still going to be at your corporate job this full time. You're not going to actually ever leave that. Uh, and that was, you know, that was everything that, that it took initially, but learning how to overcome some of those uh, internal obstacles, because I was still in the nine to five, I still had the long commute. You know, it was listening to podcasts every single morning and evening, reading lots of books or listening to audiobooks. So just taking in as much content as I could to help really prepare me to then have, you know, the strength to leave and not care about what anyone else thought and be able to shut off the opinions of others. But it wasn't, it wasn't like that in step one. It was, I've got to work on this 
and I need kind of all the information and education I can get to, to really build me up. Yeah. And I love how you've distinguished that because I talk about, and I teach about the growth principles and that if you try to skip a step, you will just get sent back, back to re complete that step, right? Like it's not actually fast. I love that. And yeah. Yeah. Um, the first thing is, is the growth steps always, as I've mentioned in the past, and my listeners know this, but I'm going to say it again because different people come in at different times, right? And, and it's good to be reminded yep. and remember these things. But, you know, we start with, there's always a catalyst, right? There's something that is either an external or an internal catalyst for change. And you had that, you didn't have the passion and the drive. You were like, Hey, I'm, I'm creating somebody else's dream right now. Um, and so you had that internal catalyst. And then before you made the outward change, you and, and jump ship, like you did the second thing. And the second thing is go educate yourself. It's go figure out what to do first. Don't go straight to the doing stage. Go to the doing of educating yourself stage, <laughs> right? Yep. Because Absolutely. Um, if you skip that stage, you're going to be sent back. It's kind of like the person who doesn't read the manual because they're like, well, I know how to work this machine. And then as soon as the machine breaks, um, you know, one of the kids puts dishwasher detergent um, instead of like, or they put like dish detergent in the dishwasher yep. instead of dishwasher detergent. And all of a sudden it's like yep. overflowing all over the Foaming. kitchen type thing, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, it's that type of thing where we're like, ah, get the manual, get the manual. And we're freaking out. And, you know, I find that there's so many entrepreneurs out there that have this thing around panic planning because they never, they, they skipped steps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I find too, like maybe you've found this with your clients, but a lot of the uh, very, very creative, um, maybe more B personality people that aren't so organized and like maybe yes. set up methodically type people, yes. they're like, oh, I have this idea and they just jump right in. And then that's when they come to people like you and say, crap, I need help mm -hmm. because I don't have a system. I don't have a strategy. I don't have. And now all of a sudden, like, I don't know where any of my finances are going. I don't know. Right. And they have all this stuff happening, um, which, you know, you can save a lot of yourself, a lot of pain through that. So one of the questions that I quickly had for you around this is, is I loved that you talked about the fact that you took strategies from corporate and you said, how can I utilize these because you actually loved your job too, right? Like, mm -hmm. so how can I utilize yes. these skill sets? and turn it into a business that I can do on my time work, right? My time frame. And so yes. I love that you, yes. that you put that out there and that that's something that's really important to look for. Um, and then one other thing that I was considering when you were talking and I was listening was you said that you had to change your mindset to turn off listening to either your own thoughts that were like, I'm always going to be in corporate. This is never going to work or other people's thoughts of, well, that's a nice hobby. That's a nice thing you're doing <laughs> on the side, right? So yep. If that was the old belief running, what was the new belief that you adopted? Because I think you said something like, I, I had to not care anymore. So what was the mm -hmm. new thought pattern that you had running to replace the old one to help you transition through that? Yes. So the biggest one is being able to show up authentically myself and, and not, not put up the guardrail simply because I'm worried of what someone else is going to think. I remember the days very well when I was so nervous to hit post or to hit live to, to show up as myself because I, I didn't want mom or grandma or high school friends or college friends to judge me for what I was doing. And now I, I just don't care. I mean, it's just amazing how that growth happens, but it, it was going through that, that now I can show up and I feel authentically myself and it doesn't, I just don't care if I get the haters, right? I know that if I have the haters, it also means that I'm impacting enough people on the other side of it that it's worth it, right? If you right. don't have haters, it's almost like you're not, you're not polarizing enough or you haven't, you haven't won enough viewers to then have people that don't enjoy what it is that you're doing. So yeah, it was really just that, um, I'll still of course have my, my low days where, gosh, can I do this? Or Am, am, am I smart enough? Am I strong enough? Can I continue with the roller coaster of entrepreneurship? And you just have to remember that on the bad days, there's always going to be the better day that comes through. So you yeah, just have to be strong enough to get through that. We talked about this. I actually talked about this in a recent podcast about saving all of your, like, I call it your fan mail, right? So your success yep. stories from your clients and things like that. So that when you do have those low days, you're like, no, I am making a difference. Like 
I've got the proof right here, right? Yeah. And even though I'm second guessing myself, these people believe in me. These people have had success. These people have, right? And so we, I, yep. I kind of addressed that a little bit. Um, and I think that one of the ways, like you said about switching from that whole idea of I, um, I don't care, right? I find that a big way to be able to do that for those who are struggling with, okay, but how do I cross that bridge is that if you, if you think about, okay, well, I'm scared to put post, I'm scared to go live, I'm scared to whatever, where's all the direction? All of the direction is me, 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 like you're the one freaking out about you and what are people going to think and blah, 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 blah. So basically, um, you know, we're surrounding ourselves by mirrors and all we can see is ourselves. But as soon as we turn them, turn the mirrors and flip them out so we can see past and see out and we focus on the clients and who we're serving, then we're like, you know what? It's worth the risk. It's worth the, Beautiful. the, the high school friend or the mom or the grandma that are like, what is she doing? Because guess yeah. what? They're not necessarily your audience. They're not who you want to serve. But if you can focus your brain on who you're serving, your, your brain literally cannot hold two thoughts at the same time. So if you're powerfully serving someone, there's no way you can be feeling self-conscious or worried about what you're doing in the moment. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie to you. You may still have that like um, vulnerability hangover after, <laughs> yeah. but it's done. It's out there and, and, and you made the step and that, and you just keep every time you just go, okay, it's not about me. Right. Mm -hmm. Not about me. And well, then you in, that, the in that point, I love to go back to uh, the big people in this space, the huge personal development people, Tony Robbins, the Brendan Burchards, who say, if you can impact one person, it's worth it. So it's why I'm not turning down an opportunity to be on a podcast, or I'm not fearful of the live that maybe only touches 25 people, because there will be one listener here, one listener there that it could be the one thing that changes their life or changes the trajectory of their business or whatever it may be. So therefore, you know, as you're saying, show up for one person, show up yeah. for one person, hoping that you can impact that one life. And don't worry about, you know, the millions that are on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everything has a ripple effect. So recognize the, the distance and the ripple effect that's available. You know, like I, I look at, Oh, I have one client that I'm that that had this massive, you know, growth where she 10x her income. So she made a thousand percent increase in her revenue the month that I was coaching her, right? That the month that we yeah, started coaching amazing. together. And yep. you know, sometimes we might be like, oh, well, you know, that's pretty awesome for that person. I'm like, wait, 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 no, no, no. Now that means that she's gonna show up differently for clients and she can serve more clients. That means that not only is her life going to change, her clients' lives are going to change, her kids' lives are going to change. Like, it, it, like consider your ripple effect. Know the power yeah, awesome. of your service. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's wonderful. Let's move into um, the, the second part of that when you talked about the timing. So, so people are like, okay, I know what, what tools I can take, I can transition with. I've, I've got these skill sets. I can take those with me. I know a little bit about, okay, get out of my head and start serving other people so that I can show up authentically. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The next part is how do they time the actual transition to leave? How do they know when it's the right time to leave? Because they don't want to put their family at risk financially um, sure. or whatever that looks like. So tell us a little bit about what that would be like. Yes. Um, so the big piece here and the part of this step that I want everyone to understand is it's probably the most draining part of the process because you are growing a business while also maintaining a full-time job. And if you have a family, it's a lot. So for me, it was absolutely the feeling of the grind. I don't love to promote grinding in your life. Um, and even as an entrepreneur, when you hear like, oh, just grind through it and you'll be fine. I don't really promote that. But in this, in this space, you almost have to. There is no, you're waking up at five and you're going to bed at 11 because that's just the only way you're going to get it all in. What that looked like for me is as I was slowly starting to gain traction in my business and now taking on clients, I had to be really, really clear about what that schedule looked like for my daily life. So like I mentioned, it was waking up well before the kids were awake to get my business work accomplished, going to work, uh, coming home, spending a little bit of time with the family, and then going back to my second job or my, you know, my entrepreneur business that I'm building. 
um, and then continuing that time and time and time again. The timing of it, now again, if you people just want numbers, for me it was eight months from when I started and really started promoting a business to when I actually left corporate. I would say there's no magic number there. It really depends on you know, what's the amount of income that you're needing to replace? How quickly are you scaling and gaining clients? Uh, you know, are, are you gaining clients that are a retainer, meaning they're providing you residual income month to month? Or are you a business that every single month you have to get new clients? So those are two really key indicators as far as what to do in kind of this middle phase. Uh, now me being in the financial background, it was important for me that I wanted to start with the retainer clients that I could guarantee more or less my income going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not the business that I run today because I'm in more of a coaching space where people are working with me for a, a shorter period of time. But as I was leaving corporate, the stability of more of a retainer type contract was way more important and something I absolutely wanted to uh, develop so that I had a little bit more confidence and stability to then walk away from, you know, an every two week consistent paycheck. So that again was just another strategy that I built into, okay, this may not be exactly how I want it to look long term, but it's the space that I have to live in currently to be able to even ever get out of here full time. Um, how I figured out when is the right time was honestly the growth of clients, right? Am I close enough to the income revenue that I need, that goal that I need to be able to even still provide for the family, but also where's my capacity? So for me, I was, you know, my work for clients meant that I was speaking with them on a weekly basis as well as doing work for their business on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, that got to around the four to five client mark where I said, I just don't have any more time, right? It was every single lunch break. I'm hopping on a Zoom call with a different client. Uh, you know, morning, evenings, I'm doing the work and it was just, uh, it was a lot. And so when I got to that place where I felt like, okay, this is a lot of work but does the financial piece match up? The one caveat I, I like to bring in here is if it doesn't, then your offer needs to shift. Mm -hmm. Because if you're never going to be able to get to, let's say you're making $10,000 a month, but you're signing on clients at $500 each, that's a lot of clients that you're going to have to get to, right? And you might not be able to do that in a full-time career. So just understanding like what sort of offer are you putting out into the space and does it make sense for you to scale the business big enough to then where you can leave behind a corporate a corporate job yeah. um it was still very terrifying when i actually chose a date like okay i have the four clients i've had them for i had them for two months so for 60 days i'd had the same clients i felt confident enough that i could now choose one more month in advance and that that would be sufficient and that would provide me enough like backspace of, okay, I think this will work. Um, and then it was just committing. And that was probably the scariest part mindset wise is now I have to tell people, right? Now I have to tell people that I have to put in my two weeks notice or in my case, I gave a 30 days notice. Mm -hmm. So now I've got to put in the notice. Now I've got to tell my family if I haven't already. And so that part of it was really overwhelming. Um, yeah, absolutely. Really, really important. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. That's, that's really helpful. I think that there's definitely some things in there that people will be able to draw out of that and to be able to say, okay, these are some things that I hadn't considered that would be great and really helpful to put in place in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think that, um, okay. That little girl is so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Gabriella, I need you to step out though, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I get it. Like, um, I've got four kids of my own. So, um, and it's one of those things that, that sometimes like when we transition to having a home office, right. Yes. That, that is part of it. And then also the fact that we're still dealing with COVID <laughs> gives yeah, us that's that very extra. Typically, I mean, she's a kindergartner. So typically she's in school and it's, uh, her dad is home. My husband's home and he works full time too. But, uh, she's with me most of the time. So even when she has to be away, she's still like, I don't even know what she was doing in here, but she's just like, Ooh, mommy's in there. Let me go, let me go poke around. 
Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Um, the only thing keeping my uh, six-year-old, she's almost seven, upstairs is the fact that my husband's making lunch for them. <laughs> so. Oh, yes. Yep. Food helps many things. Yeah. Okay. So let's transition to the last part. So once they've transitioned and they're like, okay, I've, ta- I've talked to the family, I've given my notice, I've got enough cushion um, financially yep. that I'm like, I think we can make this work. I've got um, some experience under my belt, some testimonials, maybe whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Um, and they make the jump. Um, how do they like stand strong inside of that space without freaking out and go running back to their job as soon as they have like a rough day from your standpoint, from your experience, where would you, where would you come from that? Yep. Uh, initially I want to just caution the listeners like that's going to happen and that still happens. But the reality is that you, you bounce back quicker. It's like when you're, if you go on a diet and you're, or maybe you're just a naturally healthy ear and you fall off the wagon, it's how quickly can you bounce back is what allows you to keep that physique, right? If you just have one bad day and you can hop back in tomorrow versus, oh crap, all of, you know, all of quarantine, I ate Oreos and ice cream every day. Um, so again, and that happens in entrepreneurship too. Like you're going to have the bad days. You're going to have the days you lose a client. Maybe you disappoint a client, whatever it might be. You just have to be able to bounce back quickly enough to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. The things that worked in phase one will absolutely work in phase three. So what I mean by that are the personal development. Who are the people in, in your space that you know you can absolutely go listen to the podcast, read the book, listen to an audiobook that will bring you back up? Mm-hmm. Um, for me, also an online community has been extremely important. So coming up with other networks or groups of people that are going through what I'm going through that I can connect with because my husband doesn't understand. My mom doesn't understand, Right it's just, unless they're in, in an entrepreneurial role, but if they're not, they just don't get some of the struggles that you might be going through or the things you want to just vent about. Mm -hmm. So having that support and that just community of whether it's a group of people, or like I said, some resources that you can use will be extremely, extremely important. Mm -hmm. Um, Business wise, strategy wise, you've got to have a longer pipeline than you think you need a bigger pipeline of potential prospects that can back you up. That I thought was really important. I didn't have as big of a resource of next clients that I would have liked if I could go back and do it again, right? So two months after I've now quit corporate and I lose a client that I wasn't anticipating, but I also can't control, I mean, on a retainer client, I can't control that business, right? I'm I'm a part of that business and I'm helping them grow, but if they're not growing, then I'm the first thing that goes, you know, and that was why I also got out of more done for you type of work. And now why I'm in more business strategy, because that didn't feel good. But I went through that adjustment of holy cow, like I am working for myself, but still also rely a little bit on my clients to provide my income. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that until I was in the space. So that was a really big eye opener for me of you know, the corporate space does provide you the same amount of money, typically every two weeks, a very consistent, very reliable. Now during COVID-19, people are like, oh crap, I guess I wasn't as, you know, as reliable as I thought because so many people are getting laid off or furloughed. Um, so that's an interesting just change that we're going through. But in phase three, in that step three, you've got to have one, the community of people to support you. And then two, like, what are the, the safeguards in your business to help uh, keep you afloat when times do get hard, when things are, are not as what you expect. Yeah. And I think too, um, like just on both of those points that you mentioned, um, I think that it would be really, really smart, really wise to when you do your financial planning is to set some money aside for your own growth and for your own support and stretch. Um, I am a firm, firm believer, obviously as a coach for having a coach, um, because, our family, our friends, um, and even people that are also going through the same thing, um, they, they don't also, they don't always see our blind spots, right? Um, and, yep. and they, they don't always hold our feet to the fire or pull up the mirror and say, Hey, let's take a look at where this stuff's coming from and where we can make some shifts the same way. Right. And so there is, yes. there's something to be said about investing 
in um, the one sure thing, and that's investing in yourself, right? In your own growth. That that's something that that will always pay off in dividends forever. So well, when you relate it back to the corporate space, you typically always had annual training or some new training or some new um, you know, manager that you were going to work with that was helping you with this piece of the business or that piece of the business. Well, as an entrepreneur, you don't have a manager, which is a beautiful thing, but you still need those outside sources that are helping you grow. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that point. Yeah. Um, and then the other part that you mentioned there was just having the sustainability of like the pipeline. And so mm -hmm. I think recognizing what are my money making activities so I don't get caught up in busyness because I think yes. a lot of entrepreneurs think that they're working, you know, 60 hours a week. Um, and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm working more hours than when I was working for corporate, but less money's coming in. Why is this happening? It's because their activities that they're getting caught up in aren't actually linked directly to them getting their new, new next client, right? A lot of it is busy work that um, doesn't. And so I would definitely recommend finding out what are your activities that are your money-making activities Make sure you are doing those and then start adding all of the extra pieces to the puzzle as your income flows and you can start hiring out maybe um, some other pieces of that as well, right? And so, because if you're starting out, you're probably doing the solopreneur type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, hiring too fast may have all your funds going to somebody else. So knowing right. exactly where you can um, make your money and knowing what activities to stick with. Um, so I love that you, that you brought that up too. Awesome. This is Yeah. When people fantastic. struggle with that, I always ask them, well, where did your client come from? Where did your most recent client come from? And then literally reconstruct it backwards. So figuring out, well, what did I have to do to get them on the sales call? What did I have to do before then? And you know, cause some people think, well, I, I don't know what that looks like. Well, tip it's probably talking to more people is going to be, most of the time what you need to be doing. But again, if you're not exactly sure what that looks like in your business, you know, where is it that you were? Did you find that person on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook? Where were you? How did they find you? How long did that take? Then that's where you're going to then go back and focus on those activities. Those are your money-making activities, whatever mm -hmm. it is that leads to the client. Exactly. So maybe, yeah. and I think this is somewhere where some of you gets confused because they're like, oh, well, I found that client on a face on Facebook. So I'll just make more posts. And it's like, okay, but wait, were you making a post and that's how you found the client or were you responding to a post they made and actually making a connection with the person? And yes. that led to a conversation on the phone or a Skype call or a Zoom call. And that <laughs> led to, right? So you have to totally. differentiate between exactly what was the actual activity right? That mm -hmm. I was doing that, that yep. had that happen. I know. Um, yeah. Like there, there's definitely pieces that, that create that flow. So yes. Awesome. Um, okay. Is there, um, anything else here? I think that, um, like the one overall arching point that we're looking at that turns somebody, um, into this and this desire into moving is being able to find something that is fulfilling and something that is passionate for them to do so that, they have something that roots them and grounds them down when they go through the emotions that can come with being a new entrepreneur, right? Yes. Because well, there the are those like to, times. Yeah. What I like to mention here is that if I'm working on my business, I have to wake up and I'm going to work for myself. But if I don't like what it is that I'm doing, I'm going to burn out or get bored or not enjoy it after a year or two years, right? It's not going to be able to withstand. It's the same as if I'm getting on 25 podcasts in a year and I don't love what I'm talking about, like you guys will see that it, it will show through that. I don't actually enjoy what it is that I'm doing. The passion won't be there. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's some things you can do to figure that out that will help you better align a business with, you know, what your true passions um, are. And then looking back and saying, you know what, this is really fulfilling work. I had a great day. I did this, this, and this, and, and that provides you know, happiness in the end is what we're looking for. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. So Amanda, tell us where can our listeners find you if they want to know more about building out a strategy for their exit, an exit strategy for their plan, or just maybe some of the strategies that they need in place because they've exited and now they're kind of in overwhelm mode. <laughs> yes. Uh, the two best ways to find me, you can one head to my website, 
www.thelux-way.com. From there, you're able to easily get on my calendar as well as download um, a guide to building out your offer, but that will also lead you into my Facebook group. So that's kind of the one sure spot that you can connect with me personally. You can just scroll around on my page, or then if you want to hang out in my private Facebook group, there's a link to join that as well. So that's just the one sure spot. You can kind of uh, do it all. Awesome. Thank you so much for being the show. You guys, I will add that link into the show um, description so that you guys will have that accessible and easy to use. Perfect. So thanks Thank so much, Amanda. So much. Absolutely. We'll talk, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I want to sincerely thank you and appreciate you today for showing up here on Flip the Switch. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a training session in your mindset mastery, leveling up your business success. And be a good friend. Share this episode with a fellow business builder. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place.